So before you even start this part, you should have a working drawing logo that you're mostly pleased with. You're not totally pleased with it. We're going to tweak it a little bit here. But you should have a good feel for what's going on. Now, animation is not dramatically different than what we've done already. But we do have to have a few conceptual items going in here. The first thing we have to understand is we have to introduce time. And then within time, we have to change the state of our picture based on that time. And that means we're probably going to have to tweak the way we drew the picture slightly. We have to have some logic that we're going to go inside of there. Some things are going to be on, some things are going to be off. Some things are going to move, some things are not. So in order to make all that happen, we need to first start with making the animation happen. Now, my recommendation, the way to build this, is to separate all the pieces that we have already. So we already have the main program, and we have the logo itself that does the drawing. This is the, the, the art. So I'm going to create another class, which is going to be my animator. All right. And the main thing we saw in the animator, this has to implement, implement action listener. All right. Again, hold down Alt to insert. I can implement the method this time because there's, I don't have to override it because it doesn't exist yet. I hit space and generate that, and now I have my action perform method. Now, notice by default, this is not supported yet because I haven't built anything, but that's fine. I'm going to wipe that out. So in order for me to animate, I have to have something to animate. Some people might choose to animate and do the logo at the same time. Again, that can be done. I could extend JPanel, implement Action Listener. That can all be done in one. I like put it in a separate class because then I can see the pieces separately. I can see what's going on separately. Because what I want to do is I want to essentially keep track of the logo here. So private logo, logo. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and hit Insert. I'm going to build a constructor that takes that logo. So when you build this class, you're going to have a logo that gets built. I'm going to go further than this, though, that when you build this class, at that point is when I'm going to start my timer work. And so I need a timer. Control space, java.swing.timer. So when I build the timer, I have a delay that's there, and then I have some action that's going to be in response. And this is the guy that's going to be in response. I'm going to start off, as I said, at once a second, 1,000 inside of there. It could be too fast. It could be too slow for what you have planned. We'll see, but it's a nice, fair tick, 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 tick type of rate. Okay? So I create my, that, and I say t.start start the timer right away. So I'm going to build it and I'm going to start it. And so what's going to happen with this is we're going to right now just start with system.out.println I'm going to say new date. Just to show you how this guy is going to function. Oops, uh, control space java.util.date. We don't need it in a second. We're going to actually dump it in a second. But I just want to show you how this is going to work. So this is my animator class. And notice the logo right now doesn't care about the animation. The logo is just the logo. Um, think of the logo as being a puppet. It is what it is unless somebody else moves it. Uh, we have, are going to add ways to our puppet to articulate it. We're going to put strings or a hand up its head, uh, head so you can put a hand up its butt or whatever like that. But right now, our main program is going to create the logo. It's going to add the logo in. It's going to set it visible, but then it's going to go through off and it's going to create an animator. Animator A is equal to new animator. And I'm going to pass in the logo, and then it's going to be good to go. Okay, it's very simple integration at this point. Not the only way this could be done. This is a design choice. There's many different ways to make this happen, but this will hopefully keep it nice and clean. Your logo's working, your main's working, and now I add the animator in a third spot. So if I run my code now, my item pops up. Now notice what's going to happen here. 20, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Once a second, it's going off and it's running this code. All right. So there is my program. 
So now that I understand what this guy does, I can go and update my picture. So how do I update my picture? I'm going to get rid of that and control shift. So yeah, I, you see the input there? I'm going to hit control shift O, um, excuse me, control shift I. It's going to get rid of that import because I'm not using it anymore. So how do I update my picture? So I got to figure out from my cool little picture here what I want to have happen. So let's start with something real simple. My lightsaber blade. Let's say it turns on and off. All right, so I need to say this rounded rectangle might show up sometimes, it might not show up sometime. All right, so if, if what? Something, then I'm gonna draw it. Oops, excuse me. I'm hitting tab there to move everything over. And if not, then I'm gonna not draw it. So if what? So you can do this based off of time if you want to, but time is very relative. I, I mean, I don't care if it starts at 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. or six days from now. I want this to basically just go off and run. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to create externally a count. And this count basically is just how many times this guy has run. All right, and so my count, let's make this private just to be clean. My count is going to be initialized as zero by default. And down here, I can say if count mod, we talked about that before, two is equal to zero. Oops, sorry, equal, equal zero. So what we're saying is every odd time, we're going to have this guy be on, and every even time, it's going to be off. And I just got to make sure I update my count. So at the very end of this method, count is equal to count plus one. So now when I run, it's going to be count off, on, off, on, off. And count's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to divide it every time. So one divided by two is not going to be, is, is not going to be zero. Two divided by two is going to be zero. 3 divided by 2 is not going to be 0. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 0. All right. So let's run it. Oh, it's not doing anything here. It's not changing anything here. Why isn't it changing anything here? Well, I actually am not telling this guy to change anything. My animator is running, but I'm not doing anything when it gets to run anymore. So at a minimum... I have to say logo dot repaint. So the logo only repaints any time it's told to. It sits there and does nothing otherwise. So here, now my lightsaber is blinking on and off. Let me show you something here real quick. When I resize, you see it's going to flicker because every time I stop inside of here, the repaint gets kicked off. So this count mechanism is not actually all that great inside of my logo. I put it there on purpose so we can see that. So let me show you something here real quick. Let me not repaint this again. Let me take this back out. All right, so then come back over here. Uh, I'm sorry, coming back to my app. It closes down. If I run this guy, you see it's off, it never turns on. It's never called repaint. But if I resize it, it turns on. It stays. If I resize it, it turns off and on. Off, on. On, off, on. So flicker, flicker, flicker. So you generally don't want your state to be located in the same object because it's hard to know what the actual time cycle is. Because repaint can be called, and paint can be called clearly outside of the control of your application. So this can work, but this is better to work over here as a different cycle. So right here, let's do something differently. So back in Logo, instead of having a count, let's change this to be private 
Boolean show saber. And I'm going to hit Alt and Insert. And I'm going to do a getter and setter for show saber. I, you know, I'm going to put these down at the bottom because I'm nitpicky like that. I don't care about these things. Put them way down the bottom. And over here, we're going to switch this to be if show saber. All right, we're going to get rid of the count, and then we're going to get rid of the count right here too. So that's one of the reasons why I like externalizing this, because it becomes really clear where things should be going on. This should basically, I should be able to turn the saber on or off however I want to. I may want to someday have a logo where if the user hits a button, the saber turns on. If the user hits a button, the saber turns off. And by creating a logo like this, with this show saber instead of the animation, it makes it more flexible. So over here, now I'm going to add back in. I want to put in a count right here. And on every tick, I'm going to say count is equal to count plus one. If count mod two, oops, sorry, mod, oops, sorry, mod two is equal to zero. Show saber is equal to uh, show saber true. Else show say oops, I'm sorry, logo dot show saber. Logo.showSaber, there you go. Uh, else, logo.showSaber is equal to false. And is that not compiling right? Uh, up, set saber, set show, show saber, I betcha. Yep. Set show saber, yep. And then repaint. All right, so we move that code over here real quick. So anytime they actually performed, if it's mod two, then I'm going to show the saber. Otherwise, I'm going to write bad code. I'm going to otherwise I'm going to hide the saber. And so every other second, it's going to be on and off, on off, on off, on off. Now this is the basic old school uh, logo, um, if you will, the uh, neon lights logo on and off, on and off. And this is really the foundation of the minimum bar of what you want from your animation. We can do better, and we'll play with it a little bit, but I don't want you to expect that you need to do more than this. At this point, you can get going, and let's say you don't like this this pace. Maybe it's too, um, too slow for you. We can change it up. So we can say, um, instead of count is equal to count plus one, um, I'm sorry, instead of, I'm sorry, instead of, the timer there. Instead of every second, let's say we did every half second. We can speed it up that way. Oh, wow. Now it's too fast. All right. Well, maybe what I want to do is um, I want it to be on for longer. So let's make a cycle instead of every other. Let's make a cycle of 10. So every 10 it comes on. And then instead of saying else right here, oh yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, yeah. So every ten it comes on, and then after it's on for ten, I'm sorry, I just got to do the math in my head inside of here. Um, so, so if f count. Um, mod 8 is equal to 0. And so let's see what this does. We'll just play at the numbers here a little bit. So it's off for a while. Then it's on. Then it's off. Then it's on. Okay, so I got my cycle backwards there. Um, but if it, it depends on if you want it longer or shorter on. Uh, so I can just switch these around, I think, and that might fix my problem. So it's off. It's on. Nope. 
That's off really short there. I, I, I got to play with this some more. Um, I'm not going to keep you any longer. But you can see how I can play with the cycles of how things come on. Oh, there you go. Now it's working better. It's on for a while. It's off for a while. All right. So that's what we're trying for. Go ahead and play with this. If you want to do advanced animation, we'll talk about that next.